Logan Craig here in a winter wonderland. Uh, power is out here, as you can imagine, but we're used to this. In the northern climate, we get power outages because of ice storms like this. And we don't panic because we know that there's linemen out there and they're doing a great job at restoring the power eventually, and we shouldn't have to worry much because it'll come back, unlike what you might find with an EMP. Uh, I've, this is the third take I've done this. I was doing it in the woods before and a lot of branches falling. I thought I'd try it out here. I still hear things happening here, but at least I'm not under huge trees. Major branch crashing. About a quarter mile away. Uh, but this gives you an opportunity to talk about winter preparation. Um, generally, Americans don't seem to prepare they react. Case in point would be what we saw here a week and a half ago, which was a lot worse than this. In uh, the February of uh, early February of 2019, the polar vortex. Uh, many northern states were suffering pretty badly, although we got through it pretty well. Actually, our system did 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 do us good. Uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin were warned to conserve electricity. Uh, everybody was at their limit, basically. Even coal-powered po fire plants had problems. Nuclear power plants even shut down. Coal-powered plants, uh, you scoop up a payloader full of uh, coal and it's one big chunk. It doesn't go on the conveyor too well, among other things. Now, everybody was suffering a little bit and it was so cold, we were talking 20 below zero. Fahrenheit, for those of you who live in anywhere other than the U.S. And these weren't wind chills. These were normal temperatures. I would say it's normal. These were just regular temperatures. They weren't wind chills factored in. <clears throat> A lot of downed uh, limbs and such here. This ice really plays havoc on power lines. For those of you who don't know, who don't have a climate like this, trees, limbs become heavy with water, with ice, and they break, and they land on power lines and knock out power. And it's a constant battle for them. I'm sure they're going to be working all day on this, uh, in this area. But we don't panic for this situation because we know it's coming back. Unlike an EMP, we know an EMP could last a long time, but we don't panic for this because it's coming back. And a sense of community develops also where people help each other out. We don't, it's, when we don't panic, the community does come in. But I want to take the example of what happened in Michigan and what could have ha happened in Michigan, what could have been a lot worse than it was. We actually sailed through that pretty well too in, in Michigan. There was a fire at a natural gas pumping station in the state of Michigan, which basically threatened the entire lower peninsula of Michigan, essentially. Millions of people could have been without natural gas. They maintained the natural gas because, first of all, they immediately shut down all the industry for General Motors. Uh, all the industry got shut down immediately, and they're required to do so under contract. So uh, there was no surprise there. The governor of Michigan uh, declared a state of emergency and also... Uh, you, people were ordered to turn down the thermostats by to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, maybe many people did, but maybe a lot of people didn't, you know, because that hoarding mentality kind of kicks into place when this sort of thing happens. And we see it all the time because Americans don't prepare, they react. So a lot of people maybe did turn down the thermostats, but a lot of people probably also said, well, hell, if I'm going to lose gas, I'm going to get my house as warm as I can now so that I can sail through this. I'm going to raise it up to 75 or 80, and so that when I do lose power, I'll be a good 15 degrees warmer than everybody else, and I'll be able to sail through this just fine. Well, they were talking about a day and a half of possibly threatening to shut off their gas, so the other 15 degrees wouldn't help you much. But that's probably what would have been done, because that's just kind of human nature. That's kind of the thing that uh, people would do, because we see it all the time. Well, then another situation arises. Think about this. For those of you who live in the city, this is very, very important. 20 below zero outside. There's natural gas has been shut off. Now you have no gas. What do you do? Well, oh, we got electric heaters. Let's uh, put a couple of them in the bathroom and try to heat the bathroom up. Remember, the electrical grid is already at its limit. So what do you do now? You, know, you try to, or you turn on your electric stove. Well, now all of a sudden. The electricity goes out because now millions of people have just overloaded the system to beyond the point that it can handle anymore, and it's done. 
no more electricity. Now you've just shut off not only everybody who has electric heat, but also everybody who has oil heat, and shut off everybody's electricity now in the whole region. It's 20 below up as things continue to fall. Now what? No heat. Wow, it's getting cold. Well, we got a fireplace, maybe. Very few of you do, but some of you may. Oh, well, let's uh, fire up this fireplace. Well, where's the wood? Well, we didn't really have any wood. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's all frozen to the ground. It's one big chunk. Anybody who's ever had wood heat <laughs> knows there's certain things you have to do to prepare a little bit for any kind of weather like that. So, and a fireplace is very inefficient anyway. You'd be hugging that fireplace, it wouldn't heat your home. It may keep a little area, keep you warm a little bit if you're hugging that fireplace, but other than that, it's not going to do much good. Now the sense of community comes in. Here's the community, what are you doing then? Okay, let's go to the community warming center. Community warming center, well, you know, they planned for this, but unfortunately, it's mostly due to electricity. The community warming centers, it's easy to reroute electricity. Hospitals, gymnasiums, stadiums, schools, things like that where people can gather and keep warm in an emergency. The, the communities have emergency preparedness for this. But natural gas doesn't work the same way as electricity, and it's not as easily isolated, so the whole cities may be shut down completely without natural gas. Now you have no community warming center. So what next? Community centers are, are closed, and we have no heat, it's 20 below out. Ah, how about the car? We got a little furnace in the car, don't we? Okay, good idea, let's go in the car. So we go to the car, and of course, we take it out of the garage first, right? And start it up. If it starts because it's 20 below, and we only got a quarter tank of gas, how long is this gonna last? We better go get some gas. So you go to the gas station, and one of several things are there when you get there. Either there's huge long lines, or they're already out of gas, or they can't pump the gas anyway because there's no electricity. Now what? In Michigan, we could have seen a whole lot of deaths due to this. I think this is interesting to look at this. This is how bad this is. That ice is probably at least a half inch thick on all these branches. Look at this. And you can hear these branches just breaking. This tree is already broken. Look at those branches. Thick coat of ice. They'll be without power here probably for the better part of the day. Look at those branches broken. Anyway, so now you can't rely on your car anymore for a little while until you run out of gas. How long that'll be. I remember you had to go about a whole day and a half. And in a really true emergency situation, you might have to go a lot longer than that. Is the human body even designed to live in this kind of climate? The American Indians did it. There's a lot less populations. They had wood to burn. We don't have that much wood to burn. We just are, it's not sustainable anymore in this climate. And learn how the mountain men did it. Learn how the Indians did it, how they lived in this kind of climate because that might be a lifesaver. Now, I'm not saying move to Florida either, because frankly, uh, check the populations of Florida <laughs> before the advent of electrical air conditioning. It's not a place you want to be. Not very survivable, in fact. Uh, or in the bayous of Louisiana. Look at this one leaning over so bad. In the bayous of, in, of Louisiana, where the mosquitoes just eat you alive. If you don't have shelter, see, when I do discussions around the country, talks to people, I say, number one in your prep should be water and shelter. Those are two things, right? But no, they're both number one, because frankly, I can survive for three days without water, but I can't survive three days at 20 below zero without shelter. So sometimes shelter becomes your number one concern, depending on where in the country you live and what your, what your situation, what the, th the climate is at, the, at that moment. So, shelter could very easily become number one. I think this is very easily demonstrable. So, 
What about when the power comes? Okay, there's there's more to this now. Let's say you were able to get through all this. Your living situation at your home, all of a sudden, now you won't have water. You're going to be without three days without water, very likely, because everybody's house, almost without exception, is going to have frozen pipes, maybe even a busted water heater, a uh, toilet that doesn't work because the tank just exploded on you, froze and exploded. Unless you took preparations before you left that house, or before it got too cold, by draining all the pipes and taking all the water out of the toilet as well, and water heater, you don't have plumbing. And you won't have it for a long time because not only will every plumber in the country or in the in the area be fully to capacity, your home center will be out of all the things you need, all the broken traps and water heaters, and they're not going to have anything for many many days to resupply you if you were able to manage to fix the, your own plumbing issues on your own. You just aren't going to have the opportunity to do it because the plumbing supply houses just won't have it. It's pretty shut, open and shut case, unless you get there real early before anybody else has. Look at this ice. So there's a lot to think about with all this, and you aren't as prepared as you thought you were, especially if you live in the city. Till next time, so long.